Review scores kind of suck. I get why they exist. They're a necessary evil in the sense that it is an easy enough shorthand to tell someone, hey, this is how I felt about my experience playing this game. And on a personal scale like that, where it's one person giving another person their number ranking of what they've played, totally fine, makes perfect sense. And I think it's a great way to sum up your experience. The problem is the way that review scores have evolved over time and our understanding of them when it comes to a larger conversation, uh, whether that's talking about Metacritic scores or a particular publication's review of something, outlier scores of it, even the definition of what exactly a review should be, uh, has just turned into an utter complete mess in my opinion. This is something I think about basically every time a major game gets released and we end up having, let's say, dialogue about it, uh, whether it's what scores people think it will get, what it ends up getting, why someone ranks the game higher or lower, all the stuff that kind of revolves around that. And I just wanted to put some of my thoughts down into video format finally with a little bit of a rant on it. And the first thing I really want to touch on is there is no such thing as an objective review. All reviews, by merit of the fact that it is a person talking about their experiences of playing a particular given game, are ultimately a subjective experience. Regardless of how objective a person might try to be or think that they are being, their own personal tastes and distastes, the history of what stuff they have played and have not played, literally everything that goes into just making a person who they are, uh, interacts with the gameplay experience and ultimately determines how they walk away feeling from a game. This is why there are so many big hit games that that may have certain scores that are more commonly seen than others, but at the end of the day, you're still going to see those occasional detractors. And sometimes people like to leap to the worst conclusions of why an outlier score might happen, which is something else I wanna talk about. But the point I'm making here is that a review score, no matter how someone attempts to frame it, is ultimately a very subjective thing. Sure, there are certain objective things you can talk about a game, uh, whether or not it has a stable frame rate, what frame rate it's running at, resolution, accessibility options. Uh, there are things that can be yes or no answers that we look at a game and go, okay, yes, it does have this or it doesn't have this. Uh, but ultimately the way that someone weighs the importance of these different aspects, as well as the numerous other parts that make up a game that really don't have a simple yes or no answer, completely destroy any chances of having a conversation of claiming that there is a proper objective score that something deserves to be. And this is where I find the concept of a number score to be misleading, especially within the context of how a lot of people try to use them. A game that I have played and enjoyed and I personally think is about an eight out of 10 on my own scale is not necessarily gonna be eight out of 10 on someone else's scale. It could very easily be a nine or even full blown 10 out of 10. It could very easily be a three or four because that person doesn't care at all about the stuff that I enjoy, but loved everything else that I just didn't really pay as much attention to. And the way this messes with the context that review scores are talked about is that so many people have this obsession with thinking that review scores need to be some kind of objective standard, and that totally changes the way that we perceive what number scores games get. The act of using a number score is also, by its very nature, a very reductive act, right? The point is trying to sum up an experience in the simplest format possible, give me a rating of one out of 10. And when used on that kind of personal scale, where you know who the audience and the speaker is, that makes a lot more sense. But when it's used more in the kind of public forum that we see a lot of reviews get talked about and used in now, most people aren't really talking about the individual ups and downs that a review is giving. Oftentimes they are aggregating all the review scores that a game gets and talk about how, oh, yep, this is definitely an eight out of 10 game because that's what everyone is on average saying without really getting in the weeds of why it might be an eight out of 10 to those people. And this becomes especially messy when we get into the realm of outlier review scores. Look, no one game is ever going to be perfect for everyone. Doesn't matter what it is. Tears of the Kingdom, a perfect example recently is a game that got overall raving review scores from a lot of people, nines and tens as far as the eye can see. But if you look at the grand scheme of all reviews that are out there, yeah, there are some outliers where people can give it something as low as say a six. And the way that some people react to these outlier scores, whether it's a negative review of something that generally got positive reception or a positive review of a game that otherwise got maligned against, uh, quite frankly, just saddens me. There's oftentimes this immediate jump to judgment that either a different score was given merely for the sake of being different so they could stand out and pull more clicks, or there's an assumption of some kind of additional agenda where you know they gave a positive review to a game that a lot of other people disliked because they were paid off, or they gave a negative review to an otherwise popular game because they have some kind of brand loyalty to a competitor and therefore that's why they're going to give it a negative score. And look, 
I'm a realist also. I'm not gonna say that there aren't situations where those exact scenarios have happened. But the quick naked response that people have to these outlier reviews, whether they are honest or not, is extremely unfair and oftentimes get pushed to the point of full-blown memes. One particular example, years ago, there was an IGN review of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire that was on the less positive side compared to a lot of the stuff out there. It wasn't even a fully negative review. It wasn't like a two out of 10 or anything. It just wasn't as glowingly positive as all the other ones out there. And one of the reviewer's complaints was they didn't like the map layout and how much water there was. And instead of that being reviewed as that specific reviewer's experiences and finding the fact that, yeah, the world map being mostly water was something that detracted from their enjoyment of the game, it instead immediately devolved into mudslinging against the writer. And to this day, something I still see get memed about whenever people want to poke fun at what they think is a dishonest or unfair review. This is where Metacritic comes in, something that I think is actually you know, initially actually a smart and useful tool for approaching this concept of aggregate scores, but instead ends up getting weaponized entirely too often. The point of something like Metacritic is to look at all of the different reviews that are out there for a given game, put it together, and let people know what the average is coming out to. In other words, it is a massive simplification of an already simplified approach to talking about a game's value by taking individual number scores and now turning it into one kind of seemingly official score. Now, I actually don't mind the concept of this in and of itself, especially because oftentimes when you look at Metacritic scores, you can actually see the full breakdown of where all the positive reviews are coming from, you can see who are giving more negative scores, you can take a look at highlights of you know the highs and lows, and it's an interesting way of being able to look at all of this information all at once. But what it ends up being turned into is an argument and additional reason why people get mad at outliers happening in the first place. What before could have been a situation of, oh, this person's opinion differs from my own and I'm just gonna ignore them, now turns into a debate of, oh, because of this one person's negative review, my favorite game this year now has a slightly lower Metacritic than it could have because a point got reduced by having a single five in the group of nines. When I really think about it though, I think the bigger problem I end up having with this whole approach is, look, it's absolutely an issue when someone is given problems for not liking a game that is otherwise overall generally received, but it's also the way in which these simplified reduced scores can make it so much easier to dismiss those games that are not necessarily the big name breakout hit of the year that everyone's constantly talking about. There are so many games that I've played over the course of my life that yeah, have middling scores of six and sevens, which by the way, aren't even bad scores. People tend to talk about anything lower than an eight as if it's somehow a bad game. This isn't grade school. You're not getting a C or a B for how good the game is. The concept of a five or a six, which would be the midpoint on a scale of one to 10 means that the game is fine, not bad, just fine. And that's it. Games can be fine sometimes and even have really cool things worth talking about that aren't necessarily going to be enough to salvage the other problems that a game has. And the thing is, I have played so many games in that kind of middle score region that to me left a much more lasting impression than numerous 10 out of 10 highly polished great games to play. Give me an example, Alpha Protocol. This is a game that came out back on the PS3 360, it was from Obsidian, and it was an absolute broken mess of a game. It released extremely buggy, unfinished, unpolished, had a lot of problems, and the negative scores that it got because of that were 100% deserved. Not a thing I'm gonna fight against whatsoever. But at the same time, that game had so many interesting ideas, and to this day, one of the best executions of choice, consequence, and evolving character relationships and dialogues, that it has stuck with me as one of my favorite video game experiences I have ever had, more so than a lot of popularly well-received nine or 10 out of 10 games. I love God of War, I love the Spider-Man games, I've enjoyed Halo and Gears of War stuff as well, all big name stuff, but at the end of the day, when I look back at some of the stuff that's really influenced me as a gamer and the things that have stuck with me, it's not always those massively well-reviewed games. Reducing down our understanding or discussion about a particular title down to whether or not it is a three, a five, a six, or a 10, makes it so much harder to get that idea across to people sometimes because you're no longer wondering why a game got the particular score it got if it had certain high highs and low lows. The understanding is simply, oh yeah, that one's a middle range one, that one's a more well-received one, I should just go play the one that's more well-received. 
Bit of a side tangent, but this also plays a heavy role into why I've never been that big on the concept of game award shows. I mean, I don't like award shows in general. It doesn't matter what the medium is. Films, music, it's something that I've never really taken that seriously personally. But I hate the way that it ends up being used in a lot of dialogue about the merit of individual game releases, because it no longer becomes a thing about highlighting what games have been excellent or fun in different ways. It now turns into a discussion of what is the best of a given category. And for some things, I actually do like it. I think the benefit of something like an award show oftentimes comes from being able to highlight those people that aren't talked about as often. You know, a lot of times people tend to fixate on the lead director of a title, but we're not necessarily talking about the team that handles sound design or art direction or music. So I think there is a really nice aspect to game award stuff that helps make sure that those people have their day in the spotlight if they actually did get fully acknowledged and brought on stage, which a lot of times they don't for some categories. But instead we highlight and fixate so much on trying to say something is the given best of a category, when oftentimes there are categories that don't even make sense with why two games are being directly compared to each other. Because while they may share a similar overarching genre, they are ultimately extremely different experiences. Because once again, guess what guys? Video games are art. This is a debate that ended or at least should have ended over a decade ago, and art is ultimately subjective. There may be things that are more popular or resonate with a larger audience than most people, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you can very easily just look at two games and go, oh yes, this is absolutely 100% all across the board, the better thing. I know that review scores and the way that we talk about them are not a thing that are gonna go away anytime soon, and really, if I'm being honest, ever. But if there's one main point I wanna get across in this video and really just try to impress upon you if it's not something that you've thought about, is to look, understand that yes, there are gonna be scores that are commonly occurring for different games, but if you're able to, just scratch a little bit deeper. Look into the actual conversations about these titles and not just simply whether or not it is something that has a high or low score. And even take the risk a little bit and try something it doesn't necessarily have the best review scores out there because who knows, you might find yourself discovering something that you hadn't really experienced before and were missing out on because the common number that a lot of people assigned it made you think that it wouldn't necessarily be worth your time. So that's it, that's the end of my rant. Uh, I know not my usual type of video, but just something I've been thinking about making a video on for a while now. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna see more stuff like this where it's a little more just kind of rant driven and not necessarily just product reviews, let me know with that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys later.